Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for February 11th, 2021. I'd like to begin with something a little different today, which is to send my birthday greetings to my mother, who is celebrating her 99th birthday today. So happy birthday, Mom. Now, if you're a member of the Flat Earth Society or someone who has succumbed to the narrative that the United States never landed a man on the moon, that space travel is either impossible or too expensive, then you should probably turn this off right now because I'm gonna be talking about the tremendous excitement that's being generated by a series of missions to Mars that are culminating this week with three nations putting uh, rockets or spaceships into Mars orbit. Uh, you know, the, the denial of space travel that we ever did it or that it was possible or that it was done on a movie set in, in Arizona. This is promoted by the very same people who believe in the idea of an entropic world in which nature is in, inaccessible to man's attempt to move the frontiers. But in fact, human history is defined by just such courageous and creative individuals who did not accept the idea of limits. And that's what we're seeing reflected in these accomplishments this week. And the vast majority of the population has been inspired in the past by our accomplishments in space. And we look to the future with great hope, not just for going out there to see what's out there, but for the possibility of setting up human colonies on other Earths, other uh, planets, other parts of our solar system and beyond. Now, it's important to note, as I said, that the people who promote green ideology are among those who despise or, or denigrate the accomplishments of the space program. But that's because they're unhappy people. People like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Greta Thunberg, who are in fact proselytizing that we're about to see the end of the human race within this decade. So if, if you're part of that grouping, see you later. But otherwise, listen to what's going on. Uh, the, the United Arab Emirates HOPE mission entered Mars orbit earlier this week. They're going to be putting up the first weather satellite on Mars. Uh, they're going to map the weather on Mars for one Martian year, which will be very useful for future uh, visits to the so-called red planet. So this is preparation for these future missions. The UAE Space Agency chairman said that they concluded that the best way to advance their economy is to develop a solid foundation in science. And the best way to do that is with an exploration mission in space. Now, this is exactly the idea that, that drove the pioneers of, of the US space program in the post-World War II period, and which was so eloquently expressed by President Kennedy with his commitment to land a man on the moon and return him safely. Now, furthermore, what the UAE mission shows is how cooperation works. Their satellites were designed in, in uh, collaboration with the South Korean firm. Uh, the, satellite design. The rocket that sent it into orbit was launched from Kazakhstan. Now, at the same time as the UAE mission, yesterday, China's Tianwen-1 orbiter moved into Mars orbit. I was sort of joking yesterday that I hope they have an air traffic controller there because they're going to get a lot of space travel in the next days. The China mission has a lander and a rover. And they're going to take many, many photos to map the terrain to choose a location for future missions. And they're also going to be looking for underground water. Now, China also has a very aggressive moon mission where they have a, uh, a land, they've landed a rocket on the dark side of the moon. They're, they're doing various experimentation. And what they're intending is to mine the moon for helium-3 for use in fusion, nu nuclear fusion power generation on Earth. So this is also exciting. Now next week, on February 18th, exactly one week from today, NASA's Perseverance mission is set to land on Mars. 
This is part of an expanded program to make up for lost time. And really, we lost almost 20-something, 30 years in space because of the foolishness of scaling down after the successful missions to the moon. But under President Trump and his Artemis plan, NASA has undertaken a very bold mission to explore not only Mars, but to set up a manned uh, mission on the moon and intend to have the first man and woman landing on the moon by uh, 2024. So again, check this out, look in your, see if it's covered in the local news. We're gonna keep covering this because this is exactly the kind of uh, science driver that Lyndon LaRouche identified as the fourth of his four laws as to what's necessary to reestablish a growing human economy on Earth. Now, also on Earth, we're following a couple of stories which aren't so thrilling and exciting. Yesterday, the Biden administration demonstrated its intent to protect war criminals. They announced they will appeal the judge's ruling, the British judge's ruling on the Assange extradition case. You may remember that Assange is being held in a, under miserable conditions in Britain's infamous Belmarsh prison where he's wait, awaiting extradition to the United States. What's the charge against him? Well, espionage, the violation of the Espionage Act, that, that Assange carried out a, uh, that he violated security for the United States by publishing documents. But in fact, he was a publisher. He didn't steal the documents. They were given to him. And what did the document show? It showed that the United States in the first decade of the 21st century was engaged in war crimes in Afghanistan and Iraq. That Assange was the messenger of these war crimes, not the, a thief or someone who illegally stole them or violated security laws to get them. But instead of being concerned of what was exposed on WikiLeaks, the security community under Obama and then under Trump decided to punish Assange as a way of chilling future truth seekers who investigate these kinds of war crimes. So this is a, an absolute atrocity. That, that there, there had been some hope that uh, President Trump might pardon Assange. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, he did not do so. And now we see with Biden, the decision has been made to pursue bringing him to the United States where he faces 175 years in jail. For what? For properly and honestly reporting, truthfully reporting, what was being done by the administration, in this case the Obama administration, in conducting genocidal wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So this is a, a, an atrocity coming from the Biden administration. Now, finally, it's, it's barely worth mentioning, but there is an impeachment trial underway in the Senate. And what we're seeing over and over are the scenes of the riot on January 6th. Uh, the, they're posting the Trump tweets, claiming that these tweets where he said, fight for fair election, that this is somehow an incitement to riot. What's more important is that this is promoting polarization. It's vilifying President Trump, but it's also demonizing his supporters. And to say that someone who believes it's, it's legitimate to insist on fair elections, if there is evidence that there might have been fraud, that that's not allowed. That it's been decided that it was a fair election and therefore anyone who wishes to investigate it is a conspiracy theorist and possibly a violent terrorist. So the idea of demonizing the 75 million people who supported uh, President Trump, this actually pushes the country toward a potential civil war. And who benefits? The globalist establishment that worked so hard to get rid of Donald Trump because they're opposed to the idea of sovereign nation states, especially sovereign nation states that wish to cooperate peacefully with potential adversaries. That was the crime of President Trump, that he wanted to work with Russia and China to resolve global tensions and crises. So 
Let's celebrate today the accomplishments of the United Arab Emirates, of the Chinese, and the future accomplishments of the U.S. space program, and hope that we can get through this period so that we're able to reap the benefits of these far-sighted measures. Now, tomorrow is Friday. I'll be taking your questions. Send them to me at harleysch at gmail.com. Thanks, and I'll see you then.